Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss the first three problems of code forces around 873, which was rated for division 2. So before starting the video, I just wanted to say, if at the end you feel that this video was helpful for you in any way, then do consider dropping a like on this video because it really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually good and it really helped you. And uh, you can also comment down your thoughts, how you felt about today's problems and was this video helpful for you or not. So today's contest was I feel uh, speed forces round. The first three problems were very easy. Like I would not say they were very difficult as you can see by the number of submissions. The third problem has more than 6000 submissions. So they were relatively easy uh, like according to our orbital contest. And the difference between C and D1 was I guess pretty huge because you can see by the number of submissions that it has only around 300 submissions. So I tried to solve the D1 part but was unable to solve it during the contest. So let us quickly discuss the first three problems. Now the first problem is divisible array. Now this particular problem is that we have been given a positive integer n and we have to find an array a1, a2, a2 to an like we have to find an array of size n such that each element is between 1 to 1000 and the sum uh, each element should be divisible by i right at the ith index so if the element element is present at index 2 then that particular element should be divisible by 2 right and the third condition the, is that the summation of all the elements should be divisible by n right so this is what our condition is so let us discuss how we can solve this problem so let's say let's take some example for n is equal to 4 right so for n is equal to 4 we'll have four spaces Right, so this is position 1, this is index 2, this is index 3, this is index 4. So what I can easily do is, I can place 2 here, I can place 3 here, I can place 4 here. Right, why? Because 2 will always be divisible by itself, 3 will always be divisible by itself and 4 will always be divisible by itself. Now what I will do is, I will try to calculate their sum. So 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right, so it is equal to 9. Now I want to make the whole sum divisible by 4. So I need to place some value here such that the whole number becomes divisible by 4. So I have already made it 9. I, the next multiple of 4 is 12. right? So I can add 3 to it to make the whole sum 12. So I would indeed place 3 at the first position. Now since like uh, every number will be divisible by 1. So I am free to place any number here at the first position. right? So I can easily find what is the current sum including 2 plus 3 plus 4 right? like this. And at the end, I can add the remaining value to my answer. So for example, in this case, the sum was coming out to be 9. Now I need to add 3 more to it. So I'll add 3 to it and make it 12. Right. So 3 will be there at the first position. So this is how I solved it during the contest. Now let me just show you the code. So the way I implemented in code was a bit different. So you see, uh, I, have I have taken integer n and I have taken input in it. And uh, I calculate the value of sum. So this is essentially uh, the, the summation of starting from 1 to n, right? So it is 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on up to n. Now I have created my start variable as 1. So this is the value that will be present in the first position. Now if it is leaving some remainder, now in that case, I will find what is the multiplier. That means uh, I will fi find the value of sum by n. So basically I am trying to find uh, by what value should I multiply n to get a value less than sum, right? Now the next multiple of n will be present at x plus 1 and I can calculate the new sum as x plus 1 into n. So this is the next multiple I want to find. Now extra will store the value that I want to store and that will be equal to new sum minus the original sum that I already had and I will add that value to extra. So let me just explain you this particular part how, I'm, how am I calculating this. So for example the current sum was 9 right and since 9 mod 4 is not equal to 0 this is this is not equal to 0. I would want to perform some operation on it, right? So what I did was I tried to calculate 9 by 4. So in this case, it will come out to be 2, right? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll find the value of 2 plus 1 into 4. That is 3 into 4. So let me just write it 3 into 4 and that is equal to 12. So what did it do? It, it helped me to find the next multiple of 2 that is greater than 9. So in this case, it was 12. So I was able to find 12. Now I already know that if I do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 then this particular sum is coming out to be 10 right. So if this is coming out to be 10 and I want the sum to be 12 so what is the extra value that I need right. So the extra value that I need is 12 minus 10 and that is 2 right. So I will add this particular value 2 to my starting variable. So this is what I am trying to do 
right so the idea is the same it's a start the implementation part is a bit different so i'm calculating the value of extra variable that is what amount do i need to add to my first element and i just add it to my start element now after i have calculated all of this i just print the value of start and for every element starting from 2 till len so it is a loop from starting from 2 till less than n plus 1 i just print its value and i just print a new line so this is how we can solve the first problem now the second problem is permutation swap and this particular problem says that we have been given a permutation so the permutation will not be sorted and uh, we have to find the maximum value of k such that with the help of this particular value we can sort the whole array right now what do we do, need to do with this particular value k so to sort the array we can perform this type of operation which says we have to choose two indices i and j such that their difference between the indices is equal to k so the difference between their places should be exactly equal to k and we can swap these values at at index i and index j right so we have to find the maximum value of k such that we can sort the given permutation so let me just discuss some sample test cases so we have this here right so first let us discuss some base idea behind this behind solving this particular problem then we will discuss it with the help of the sample test case so let's say i have some positions like this right now let's say i have some element here and its correct position is this one right so it is three pieces away now uh, let's say i have some element here and its current position and its correct position is this one so i believe this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 places away right so this element belong to this particular position and this particular element belong to this particular position right this is how it is going now to make this particular element in its correct position i would have to make this element go here right so i will definitely have to swap a distance of 3 right and again similarly for this particular element to make this element go in its correct position i will have to make a swap of, of distance k 6 right so in this case k was equal to 3 and k was equal to 6 in this particular case right because i made a jump of 3 here and i made a jump of 6 here right now i need to find some value of k that works for all of them and it is as maximum as possible right so when you see this whenever you see this type of problem you would always want to take the gcd of all values of k right so let me just show you how this works so if k is equal to 3 works for this particular condition that you can make a jump of 3 then k is equal to 3 will also work for this particular swapping why because you can always make a jump of 3 here and again make a jump of 3 to this particular position right so what we are trying to do is we are trying to find the individual values of k for each and every element right so how do we calculate k we know that it is a it is at a current position i and its correct position is j so the element is currently at i and its correct position is j so the absolute of this value which should be the value of k for the current element now if each element has its own k then we will need to find a value of k such that it works for all the elements right so the best way is to find the gcd of all these values and that gcd will give us our best answer right so let me just uh, also show you this with the help of a sample test case so let's take this one so for this particular case one is here five is here three is here four is here two is here and six is here right so the correct position of one is one itself so no change no change here now the correct position is for five is this particular position right so uh, it it is moving for a distance of three now the correct position of three is this uh, itself so it is in its correct position 4 is also in its correct position the correct position of 2 is this position so it is also moving a distance of 3 so the so like there was only uh, two values so the gcd will always be 3 so i believe that uh, this is the correct answer and 3 is present here so let me just show you the code how this works so this is the code that i submitted during the contest and uh, here we have what i have done is i have taken an integer n i have created the vector v and taken an input n and I have initialized my answer with 0. So why exactly 0? So I have taken it to be 0 because if I take the GCD of 0 with any value. So if I, for example, if I take the GCD of 0, comma a, then the answer will be a itself. Right? So that is why I have initialized this value with 0. Now uh, I run a for loop and I set my value of x as. So this is the difference or the current 
value of k that I want for the current element. So I have taken it to be i plus 1 minus v of i. So i plus 1 because like uh, it, it was one based indexing in the problem itself. So that is why I have taken i plus 1. Right. So it was 0 based here and in the problem statement it is 1 based. So that is why I have taken i plus 1 minus v of i. Now what I do is I find my answer as ccd of answer comma x. x is the new value that I have found. Right. So at the end I can just return my answer value. So uh, I am using C++ and this GCD function is my own custom GCD function that I have defined here. Right. If you want to use the inbuilt GCD function then you have to use underscore underscore GCD. Right. Otherwise it will not work. So let me just discuss the last and the final problem for this particular uh, problem discussion. So it says that we have been given two arrays A and B consisting of n integers and all the elements of A are pairwise distinct. So they are basically unique elements in array A. Now we have to find the number of ways in which we can reorder a such that a i is greater than b i for each of the indexes right. So since this, value, this particular value can be pretty huge then we have to print it modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. So this problem also was not very difficult. So let us just discuss the first sample test case that we have here. So as soon as I uh, get these values uh, I would first want to like sort all of these values. So let us say at the first position we have 2, then we have 4, then we have 5, 6, 8 and 9 right? these are the values that we have for the array A. So this is the array A. right and now if we also have an array B. So for this particular array we have 1, 1 and then we have 3, 4, 5 and 6 right. So these are the values that we have. Now if I have 6 at the ending what are the possible ways I can choose an element for the last position. So remember a of i should be greater than b of i. Right? This is our condition. So if b of i is 6, how many elements from a are possible to place at this particular position. Right? So we will see that there are only two elements possible. So let us say I have, an, I have something like this. So there are 6 elements right. So I have 6 places like this. So for the last position I have two choices. Similarly, if I talk about this particular element 5. Now how many elements are greater than 5 in the array A? Right? Because those will be the elements that I can place at this second last position. Now the elements that are greater than 5 are 3 elements. But remember I have already taken an element one of them one of these 3 for this particular position. Right? So obviously if there are in sorted order if some element works for 6 it will definitely work for 5. That means if I am counting 3 elements here that are working for 5, I will count a single element that was already used before twice. right? So if I have taken 1 element for the last position and there are 3 elements greater than 5, then I will have to subtract 1 from it. Why am I subtracting 1? I am repeating. I am subtracting 1 from it because I, I would have already taken 1 element to place at the last position. right? So here also I have 2 possible combinations. Now how many elements in the array A are greater than 4? So obviously there are 4 elements greater than 4 in array A. Now since I have already taken 2 of them to place at the second last and the last position then that means I have only 4 minus 2 that is 2 elements remaining. Right. Now coming to this particular position how many elements in array A are greater than 3. Now this for this particular answer I have 5 elements in array A that are greater than 3. But since I have already taken 3 of them again I will have 5 minus 3 that is two elements possible at this particular position. Again I ask the same question how many elements in the array A are greater than 1. So all of the elements in the array A are greater than 1 right that means 6 elements are greater. But since I have already taken 4 of them that means 6 minus 4 only 2 elements are possible to place at this particular position. Now again how many elements are greater than 1 in the array A since there are 6 elements greater than 1 and I have used 5 of them so the only possible element is 1 right. So I can, that means I can only place one element at this particular position. So if I try to multiply all of these values that means I can place one element at position 1 I have two choices at position 2 similarly 3, 4, 5, 6. So at each position this is denoting the number of choices that I have. So overall I have 2 raised to the power 5 choices and this will be equal to 32 that is the correct answer for this particular test case right. Now what happens if there is any case that I do not have any choice for any particular element that means uh, uh, at that particular position 0 will be present 
and since all of the positions has to be a of i has to be greater than b of i the overall answer will also become zero right now let me just show you how i implemented it during the contest so this is the code for the last problem that we are discussing today so what i have done is i have created an integer n and i have taken two vectors and i have taken input in it and i have sorted both of the vectors now i initialize my answer with one and i just uh, make a reverse for loop starting from n minus 1 till it is greater than minus 1 now i am doing binary search using the inbuilt function lower bound i am searching it in a and what i am searching is i am searching b of i plus 1 why because i am trying to find an element greater than b of i so i am searching b of i plus 1 now if the position p is equals to n that means there are no elements present in the array that are greater than b of i that means i can set my answer to 0 and i can just directly break from here right otherwise i'll count the number of elements that are greater than uh, this particular b of i right so this will be equal to n minus v, p so p is the uh, position of the smallest element that is greater than b of i right so i i count i count the total number of elements as n minus p now since i have already taken some elements so that number of elements i have to subtract from the value count right so n minus i minus 1 will be uh, the number of elements that i have already taken so this is uh, like a homework for you i'm not explaining this particular part if you like try to write it down on paper you will realize why i have taken these specific values only and how is it exactly working so let me just tell you that this part is calculating the total number of values that are possible the total number of values in array a that are greater than b of i and this particular part is subtracting the number of values that have already been taken right now i can uh, like update my answer as so this is my custom function of mul modular multiplying i'll also show you how to works so uh, i'm multiplying answer with count and taking mod with it so let me just quickly show how this particular function works so this is my function i have taken integer a integer b and the value of mod so i have to find the value of a mod m b mod m and just return a into b mod m right so this is very simple not very complex thing so i just return this particular value now at the end after i have executed the whole for loop i can just print the value of my answer so this was the solution to all the problems that uh, i was able to solve during the contest i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you did then consider dropping a like on this video i also see that a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet so if you're one of them do consider subscribing to this channel it's always free of course and you can also unsubscribe later if you don't find the videos interesting and share this channel with your friends till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye, -bye.